Uh, I thank God for this opportunity given to all this afternoon here in Nigeria and this Zoom meeting. The topic here I have to discuss with us here is sinning against the Holy Spirit. Sinning against the Holy Spirit. I took my test from Matthew chapter 12, verse part 1 and part 2. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And who shall not speak the word against the Son of Man, he shall be forgiven. But who shall not speak against the Holy Spirit, he shall not be forgiven. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Brethren, this word of the Master is very, very serious for us. But first of all, what is blasphemy? Blasphemy can can be understood as language that insults or shows a lack of respect for God. A language or insult shows a lack of respect for God. Very, very serious matter. Us, speaking against the spirit of God. The man said to the serious to tell you that it is very, very serious. And he says, you can blaspheme or you can speak any manner of words against him. And you can blaspheme him. But the Holy Spirit, my dear brother, you cannot. God doesn't overlook such statements against the Holy Spirit. Any manner of sin at all, any manner of if you like, you can kill to tell you the seriousness of this matter. If you kill, I'll be forgiving you. If you do any manner of sin, you can forgive me. But I'm not telling you to kill. But in order to tell you that this is a serious matter. You know that sin is very bad. But the matter says any type of sin, any type of blasphemy can be forgiven. Even against him. You know that that time we talked about evil speaking. Speak any evil word against the master Jesus. But if you speak that to the Holy Spirit, against the Holy Spirit, you cannot be forgiven. Uh, brethren, in this our discourse, we will enlighten those who claim that the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity of God, and which the Father and the Son A co equal in power and authority. Yes, there are some who claim that. That the Son, the Father, that are equal in authority and power, which is not so. But in this topic, we are going to enlighten them. And it cannot be, can never. So it has been so difficult to them in explaining this statement by Jesus. This statement of Jesus, our master, is so difficult for them to separate it. That why you sin against himself? You will be forgiven. But why you sin against the Holy Spirit? They cannot. They cannot separate this statement and its position in power. But this statement certainly disproves the absolute equality of the Holy Spirit 
and the Son of God. When we understand what the Holy Spirit is and the circumstances under which these words of the Master we are spoken, all is clear and harmonious, logical and satisfying. First, let us begin with the verse 22 of Matthew 12. We are told of one of Jesus' miracles. A man was brought to him, possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. It's so much that the blind and the dumb both spoke and saw. Very from miracle. But listen very carefully. What happened? To the people surrounded in the presence of Jesus where he did the miracle. What happened? The people who witnessed this miracle we are properly amazed and said is all this the son of David, verse 23. So this is wise. The son of David was the promised Christ. And when they saw through Jesus the exercise of what they knew must have been divine power, they were convinced that he was indeed the great one. Yes. They saw the miracle that we are in their heart on this. Yes, truly, this is the divine power. This is the one that was promised to them. It was very, in fact, they were happy. And they believed that this miracle comes from God. They were happy. Yes. They were convinced. And that he was indeed the great man whom the God of Israel had promised to send. And to simplicity of minds and the humbleness of heart, they were glad to acknowledge the truth that it was so progressively demonstrated to them. But it was not so when the Pharisees. It wasn't so with the Pharisees. When they heard it, they said, This fellow dwelt not cast out devil, but by Bezabon, the prince of devil. That's what they said. These Pharisees in India. <laughs> In the hardness of heart, they refused to accept the logical explanation of what they had witnessed. They had seen the power of God, the Holy Spirit of God, manifested in the casting out of the devil from the afflicted man. But we are ready and willing to deny the fact. Closing their mind to the reality. You see? Instead of praising God as others or being happy, no, 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 no. They say, no, no, that, this cannot be. He did it through the power of Jezebel, the prince of them. You see it? This was the background of Jesus' statement in our text. By it, the master implies that the Pharisees in denying the truth of what they had clearly witnessed have set themselves in opposition to the Holy Spirit of God. Indeed, 
as he said, they had but fell against the Holy Spirit. If that they had thought that it is good work, was in reality the work of death. Not the work of God. They pretend it to the work of God. Really? Such a sin, Jesus said, it could not be. Not that in the end of God. My brethren. This account highlighted or highlights the fact that the Holy Spirit is, is simply the holy power of God by which he accomplishes all his good purposes. This instance it was exercised through the master in reading the which was causing him to be blind and dumb. And the story he had, it was a demonstration of divine power. And it's always miracle uh, uh, in the sense that our infinite mind are unable to understand. Brother Chooks, Brother yes. Chooks, reposition yes. your, your camera. We are, not, we are only seeing your head. Uh huh. Is this That's good? good. That? Yes, go like this. Okay. It's okay. Okay. And they also talk slowly so that right, we'll be you. hearing you. Okay. Uh, thank you. He was says, why is it that sin against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven? We are speaking it even to ourselves now to understand those who have understood or who have this knowledge to be mindful of themselves. God cannot give or fight you without being having this knowledge. That now the false have the pure knowledge, but be very careful to speak. Now, that's why I have a question saying, why is it that sin against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven? It is so in that the both sense it is sin against the light. In a both sense, it is a sin against the light. Against the knowledge, having known the knowledge, some of us have known the knowledge. Some of us have the light, be full. Well, still not mature or perfect. But those that God knew that we have understood well, when we go contrary to such movement of such words, we are sinning against the Holy Spirit. We must be very careful. Those words you know, God knew that we understood it well, well. When you go contrary to it, we are sinning against the Holy Spirit. The others that we have not understood well, we may be saying this and that. It is for you. In the case of Pharisees, there was the chance that they could misunderstand Jesus. Teaching. After all, while he spoke as never spoken before, the conception of him had to be based upon his words. No fault could be found within Jesus Christ or his gracious words. But in the imperfection and the prejudice of the Pharisees, they could nonetheless misunderstood the meaning of what he said. And the master indicated to forgive it. But did you start the meaning of the 
miraculous working man, our power of God and the Holy Spirit was not ignorantly done by the Pharisees. It wasn't ignorantly done. That's what I said earlier. They knew, they knew that this miracle was done by God through Jesus Christ. They did deny it. They denied, they knew. They denied it. So that's why I said, what do you know? The truth you know. Make sure that you don't deny it. Yes. I have a sample of it from Paul. When Paul himself was persecuting the Christians on his way to Damascus for further persecution, he was shot down by the lies of the group. What saved Paul was that Paul agreed, Lord, 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 said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Say, who are you? Say, I'm the Lord. God did not deny or say the devil wanted to stop him from further uh, persecution. And it mean that Paul denied that power, that it was Satan that wanted to disturb him from further persecution. That would have been to Paul sinning against the Holy Spirit. But Paul agreed and accepted by the Lord. What they have to do is that the words of God, the enlightenment that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has given unto us, we must be very careful. We must be very careful in our world teaching. That's what I want us to see. So Paul was, who had been a blasphemer and a persecutor, he had done great injury to the brethren of Christ, but he had not blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. It was against Jesus, but by unbelief, he never knew Jesus. You never knew Jesus, but you persecuted Jesus. You said, you are persecuting me. For that reason, Paul was disguised and afflicted. Because he was persecuting Jesus, not Holy Spirit. And they, by unbelief, he agreed that the power that shone on him, on his way to Damascus, was the power I return my brethren. I would not stop us, but I want us to be very aware. My brethren, careful for those who are stored there and have been the knowledge of how you move and talk. Yes. Words. All that who do not know, God doesn't charge those who don't even know that they sin against you, against the Holy Spirit. But particularly for us, for those matured ones, the elders, the real people who study and have the accurate knowledge as the God may permit them. If you go contrary to it, have done it, then you are sinning against God. My brother, there's no further explanation of this. I call it a joke. Thank you. A poor who has been a blasphemer, as I have already said, and a persecutor. He had done great injury to the brethren of Christ, but had not blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. His sin was against Christ, whom he did not know. He had sinned ignorantly and in unbelief. So mercy was extended to him. Great mercy he did. For he was forgiven and exalted to the high position of a special apostle in the church. 
the situation would have been difficult if when that great demonstration of power, which he later characterized as the efficient, was given to him on the Damascus Road, he had been disobeyed or disobedient to it. This would have been an uncontrollable state. If you see as an apostle, 26 verse 19. Unlike the Pharisees, or had he been like the Pharisees, he might have insisted that the devil will try to interfere with his work of stamping of the head. Jesus and continue on the Damascus to complete his mission of persecution. The soul heart was right. He accepted the logical defense, was convinced and gladly entered into the service of the desire. So, my beloved brothers, this is where I want us to understand a sinning against the Holy Spirit, not for us to go to the Pharisees, but within ourselves to know we are going to sin against the Holy Spirit. And I said it earlier, that it was only when you might have known the truth, the life that God is convinced that I have already known that life. That particular knowledge that you are going to pick up, I guess, from speaking against the Holy Spirit. But having not done it properly, on soon properly, coming from it. Why you understood it, you continue talking against it, even if you are, uh, uh, you get out of truth, you are, you get the noise of making the mistake of talking about the word you know. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, let us be very mindful of ourselves. Thank you.